Lydia, oh Lydia, say have you met Lydia? Today we're going to learn a Grateful Dead piano riff you chose, what the Lydian scale is, and how Keith used it to make this a great riff. Oh, you can see that Welcome back to Keys to the Dead. In an earlier video, we listened together to a Keith solo from They Love Each Other, and you got to pick which part of the solo we would learn. Let's listen to the part, learn it, and talk about why it's so great. This riff occurs in transitioning into the chords for the chorus section of the song. So we're going from a, a G to C vamping in the verse to the chorus, which is F, C, and G. And so Keith really wants to announce that, announce the transition, make sure everybody gets, hey, we're getting to an exciting part of my solo, let me announce my arrival. And so he does that by thinking about it in three distinct parts. He's going to play a riff over the F, he's going to play arpeggios over the C, and then he's going to play another line over the G. And we should think about each of those separately. That's how Keith is thinking about them. Let's start by learning the right hand. So we have an F major triad. On the way down, he adds in the B natural. On the way back up, it's just the triad. Then for the C, he plays just a triad. Both times descending. The F descends and goes back up. The C just descends both times. Putting those two pieces together. Then for the G, he plays this line. So slowly we're doing mostly G mixolydian. And then when we get to the bottom, we're high, we're out, we are outlining a G major chord, right? The first and the third, and doing sort of a suspended fourth back to the third. And we're also sliding to the third. Let's put it all together, the right hand. Okay, now the left hand. The left hand starts on an F. Remember, we're playing the F chord. So the left hand is F chord and the C chord, we're doing similar things. For the F chord, we start on the root F, and then we're going to do a syncopated walk up to the C. So it's F, G, A, C, and then for the C, we're going to do something similar. C, D, E, G. So combining the F and the C, And then at the end, when we get to the end of the riff with the G, we're going to go from our G octaves to a G root triad to a C inversion back to the back to the G. So the whole thing together is You may find it tricky to combine the two hands here. Let's do it very slowly. If 
you're having trouble getting into this syncopated rhythm, go ahead and sing yourself a chorus. Play, just play an F, C, G to get into the rhythm of the song. Lord, you can see that it's true. Now for the best part. Let's talk about the best part of the riff. And that is the B natural on the F chord. Earlier we talked about how this part of the solo is the transition from the verse half in the, in the beginning to the chorus half. And key very purposefully includes this B natural note, right? So we remember Although B natural is part of the B mixolydian scale, one way to think about his whole solo is it's just B mixolydian over the whole thing. But that's not how Keith is approaching it. He purposefully did a, an F riff, and then a C riff, and then the G riff. So he's thinking about each chord. And when he's thinking about the F chord, there's his chord, and he throws in a B natural. What is the B natural? It's called the sharp 11. If we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Put it up to 11. 11. You can think about it as the sharp 4, but a more typical way to describe it would be the sharp 11. Let's build up our chord. When we build up in a series of thirds, an F chord, right, we have our, our root is F, our third, our fifth, our seventh, our ninth, and then we get to our eleventh. Now, in a regular F major scale, there's our 11th, the same as the 4th. Our 11th is a B flat, but Keith doesn't play a B flat. He plays a B natural, so instead of the regular 4th, it's a sharp 4th. And a, the sharp 4th is part of musical vocabulary, it's part of musical language of a ma majestic or a bit of a floating sound. It really, it announces your presence. It's, it's very royal sounding. And that's what Keith puts in. He says, we're here, we're going to the chorus, and I want to announce that. Keith could have just played an F major arpeggio. He could have done this. But he didn't do that. For the F chord and only the F chord, he adds in this sharp 11 note. And that's what makes it so magical. It's that he adds in this, this note, which is a little dissonant, but sounds great. And it really announces the transition from the first half of the solo to the second half. Now that we've learned all about this riff, go back and listen to the entire solo and see how it fits in. You got this. These go to 11. 